Hi, this is Tim Cant for Native Instruments, and in this video, we're going to look at how you can add colour to your sounds with Solid EQ, part of Native Instruments' Solid Mix Suite, a set of plugins designed to give you the feel of high end studio console mixing without the associated cost or hardware footprint. You can check out the demo version of the suite by following the link in the top right hand corner. To demonstrate Solid EQ's capabilities, we've recorded this baseline direct from a vintage hardware synth specifically the digital analog hybrid, the Roland Alpha Juno 1. Let's take a listen. The bass has a solid low end, a punchy attack and a warm fuzzy sound. However, if we want it to be comparable in brightness to a more modern synth tone, we'll need to brighten it up a bit while hopefully retaining the punch and weight. Our bass sound isn't exactly lacking in mid and top information. In fact, if we add Voxengo's free spectral analyzer span to the master bus, we can see that the sound's punchy attack has harmonics that gently roll off from the fundamental, which peaks at about minus 33 dB, reaching minus 78 dB at about the eight kilohertz region. Let's add Solid EQ. Solid EQ's HMF, that's high middle frequency band, has a center frequency that can be set from 600 to 7000 Hz. Let's leave it at its default frequency of 2049 Hz and turn its gain knob up to about 9 dB. This brings out the baseline's hidden crispness and character and will make it sound more prominent in the mix. Note that when we compare the drum process signals through span, they both peak at around minus 6 dB. This means that even though we've made the parts sound bigger and fuller, it's not eating up a large amount of extra headroom. Paying attention to the peak level in this manner is helpful when applying effects because it helps you work out if your processing is going to eat up headroom and if that extra headroom is worth the improvement in sound. Solid EQ has two modes, G and E, which have differing response curves. In E mode, the LMF and HMF bands keep a constant bandwidth for all gains, whereas in G mode, the bandwidth for the LMF and HMF sections vary with the gain set by the dB knob. The more powerful the cut or boost, the wider the frequency band. E mode is set by default, and if we switch to G mode, we get a slightly crisper sound around the center frequency, though this does increase the peak level a little. Another way to color the sound is by using the low middle frequency band to attenuate a quite specific frequency range. To do this, we turn down its Q knob to the minimum to get the tightest curve possible, then turn down its gain to minus 12 dB or so. In this configuration, the band works like a notch or band reject filter. If we set its center frequency to around 200 to 300 Hz, this gives us a hollow sound that maintains the weight and crispness of the sound, while making room in the mix at the 200 to 300 Hz range, which is likely where your snare drum's fundamental frequency will sit. You'll also notice that with this attenuation, the peak level sits a couple of dB lower than it did previously. So if you'd like an idea of how much extra headroom this buys you, you can add a gain plugin and set its boost to about 2 dB. Now when you bypass these plugins, you can hear the dry signal peaking at the same level as the wet signal. It's worth noting that in the context of a mix, the frequency content of the other elements present will determine how high you can push the sounds level before it overloads your master. Another cool way to add color is to set the high frequency band to the bell response curve, which means we can target a specific frequency range. 
Setting its frequency to 5000 Hz or so and boosting by 6 dB brings out a little extra top end bite without adversely affecting our peak level too much.